Hey guys, it's Amy. Welcome back to my channel. I haven't done a Q&A in a long, long time. In fact, I think it's been two months. Anyway, I got some really good questions from you guys, so I'm gonna go through them and hopefully you'll find it helpful. First question from Cheryl Lynn or Sher Sherilyn. Hi Amy, love your videos. I was wondering if you could give me your opinion. I hesitate on the Neverfull for all the reasons you did. I prefer smaller bags. But I'm going to Hawaii soon and have been eyeing the Hawaii Never Full and it's been one of those bags that you can only get in that state. I've had the Never Full MM in Demi Ben, but sold it due to its larger size and wide opening. That Hawaii Never Full though, I love the look and it would be a great memory bag. Hawaii is my honeymoon state, whimsy, whimsy over practicality, silly problems. I don't think it's silly at all. I know exactly what you mean. Before I converted to being a lover of Neverfull, I always felt that the huge opening is just, you know, it didn't seem secure. If anything, I would prefer the Speedy or any bag that has a zipper top. But you know what? I've since learned that the Neverfull is, you know, there's a reason why it's so great and there's a reason why everybody loves it is that regardless of the big opening, it's just so easy to get in and out of. And it boils down to the functionality and the ease of access. And to be very honest, I actually don't really enjoy my speedies as much anymore. I do have one uh, just because it's so iconic and I, I do want to have one in my collection. Uh, so I do have the 25 bandoulière, but I honestly feel that Neverfulls are I don't know, they're just so easy. It's great for shopping, it's great for traveling. It's just, you know, you throw things in, you don't have to think about it. I know that you already picked up your Hawaii Never Fall, so congrats. Um, I honestly think that even if you don't get to use it that often, uh, it's still a great bag and I think that you will not regret it because the price just keeps going up anyway and it's such a great memory, memorable piece for you. Um, yeah, I think that whenever you do reach for it, you'll be so happy and I think you made the right choice. Jenny Alvarado, I want to buy my first Chanel bag, but I do not know if the jumbo double flap or the medium double flaps. Some people say that the jumbo weighs a lot and the medium is very small. I totally understand the dilemma. Uh, I, I had exactly the same problem when I was trying to uh, figure out whether I should get the jumbo or the medium large. Uh, by the way, I have the jumbo in the single flap. I did get mine pre-loved because the single flap has since been discontinued since 2010. So um, if you want to get a single flap, you'll have to look in the uh, second hand market, in the pre-loved market. But uh, between the single and the double, there's such a big difference. I've tried the double flap in the store. I knew right away that it wasn't for me. I think because of the weight and because of how bulky it looked with the double flap because the double flap really makes the whole structure of the bag very square almost or should i say almost like a wider bag maybe not as square but just a really wider bag uh, because of the double flap it really kind of maintains that wideness this is a single flap i feel like the double flap it it's more even like up and down is still as wide up here than here whereas the single flap tends to be more squishy not squishy but more like pointy on top because i guess over time with just being one flap uh and and gravity it will just kind of pull this flap and it will become more pointy on top uh so i felt like when i was trying the double flap and personally i don't like the double flap because of that reason because i felt like it was just so wide. Even though it's really the same size, the jumbo size, I felt like when I look at the mirror with the, the jumbo double flap, it just looked like it overwhelms me. I mean, this is not small, but it definitely feels, I don't know, lighter, thinner. So look-wise, I, I already prefer the single because of that, because I think it's not as just thick. Um, Weight-wise, I also prefer the single because it is really light compared to the double. I mean, this bag is not light, but it's not that heavy. So I think if you're dead set on the jumbo size, uh, I highly encourage you to look into the single flap, especially if you can find one that's in really good condition, like mine is in really good condition. You can see that the sides are, you know, they didn't puff out or anything. This was really well 
preserved and yes the leather is more smooshy because it's an older bag and it is also just a single flap but i really kind of like that it's almost like it's already broken in and it's not as stiff i find that ease of use with these kinds of bags like you know how like it's softer but it still has its structure because it's been really well kept and well stored regarding the medium size I personally want one too and uh, I don't know if there's any single flap available for the medium size because it would also kind of solve the issue of the space uh, but regardless I feel like this the medium size is more of an evening bag even though it is you know it it is big enough to sort of uh, downsize for day use like I I'm, I'm really simple. I, I don't really take a lot of things with me. I do have bulky items, but I only have a few items to be honest. So for me, it would work out um, because I can get away with using minis even during the day. So I know for me, it will work out and it will definitely be more of an evening or day to evening bag for me. And I, I, I love the concept of, of having such a versatile bag in my collection if I can get one in the future. So it really boils down to really what you're looking for. Also, the other thing is I feel like the jumbo compared to the medium, uh, that the jumbo is more casual because of the size. I feel like if you want to wear this bag to say a lot of events or uh, formal events and that and such, I feel like this is not as suitable as the medium size bag. Of course, you can do whatever you want, but I'm just saying I think the medium size, which is a smaller bag, would look a lot more put together. The reason why I went with the jumbo flap first, uh, because I, I like both, I would have both in the perfect world, uh, but I, I opted to go with the jumbo first because uh, I felt like the jumbo I can you know get away with a lot more situation and I felt like because it was casual and I'm you know I don't have that many formal events to go to so I felt like I can get more use out of it first and that's the reason why I opted for it and also um, I, I have smaller bags for evening use so that wasn't such a big issue I can get away with my smaller mini bags next question is by Trace Trace Hi Amy, I'm looking at the single flap and found one but the sides puff out. The inside of yours is folded in. Does it mean that it's in a bad condition? I'm referring to what I said earlier, <clears throat> I think she meant like the, the sides here. That the ones that she saw or the one that she saw is more like com comes out a little bit more whereas mine is really, you know, you can see that it's really well tucked inside. Um, I have two theories for that. It's either that mine is in better shape condition or it's just been stored better. Or two, it's not that it's in worse condition, the one that you're looking at, but more because it's from a different season and the leather is maybe softer. And also, um, you know, just it just has a tendency to do that because like I said always that, um, you know, even the classic flaps themselves, from season to season, they kind of differ a little bit. Either the leather is stiffer, softer, shinier, matter, uh, as in more matte. Don't get mad, but I know that everybody says that they store their bags and they make sure to stuff them. I do the opposite. <laughs> I don't like stuffing my bags because I feel like if I don't stuff it properly, then it will just bulge out in areas that are not supposed to. So for example, if I started stuffing this one and it you know the the sides of it comes out obviously i don't think that people are trying to do that but it can happen or maybe like or maybe the you know it becomes wider or just in general like maybe the corners are just more relaxed uh, i feel like stuffing bags is not really always helping the bag so the way i store this is really easy i just stored it like this i basically just tuck the chains in And it's sitting on a very flat surface in my um, bookshelf. All I'm saying is that I don't know, but maybe it's possible that uh, because people are so used to hearing that you should stuff your bags, that um, maybe it just puffed out the sides because of that reason. Or maybe it's just due to use and the condition is just not as great as mine. So it could be either or. Um, honestly, I would not only look at how the shape is, I would also look at you know, all the corners, is it scuffed, is there any dents or scratch or anything like that, and uh, if there's any creasing, because creasing is 
always a good indication that the bag has been well used so definitely not as good condition or not as new uh, looking so I would look at all these other factors as well next question is by M hi Amy I'm curious how you how you're liking your bag I'm thinking of getting the Chevron mini however I'm not as familiar with the Chevron as I am with the diamond quilting is there a lot of demand for Chevron how is the resale value? Well, my dear, I'm glad that you asked because um, just right before that, I filmed my reveal for this Chevron Mini. So now I have both in diamond quilting and in Chevron, uh, just in different shape and different season. To be very honest, I think both are just as great. I did ask that very same question that you were wondering uh, to my essay a long time ago, and she told me that Chevron is basically always has been just as classic and just as timeless as the quilting they consider the chevron to be um, in their permanent classic line I think they're both as timeless uh, I think people tend to think that this one is a little bit more which um, I think it's just more iconic and whenever you see it you just think of Chanel but I don't think that the, the chevron is any less timeless than it, it is <laughs> and so I think they're both just as classic now in terms of uh, resale value just from observation I do feel that people tend to you know prefer quilting but I really think that they're both just as great uh, and that uh, resale value wise I don't really think that it would change that much because I think there's always going to be someone who's looking for specifically Chevron and there's always going to be those people who are die hard diamond quilting designs next question hi Amy love your videos as always I would like to hear your view on the walk Gabriel and the Coco handle would you ever consider getting any of them I guess my style is similar to yours let's talk about the walk first I am not a fan of the bag itself or SLG I suppose uh, just because if I were to buy one I would treat it as a bag that's just how I am I know you're supposed to use it as a wallet and it is an extension of a wallet but um, I don't really have a use for that I think that it's just way too small I might change my mind in the future maybe when I stop doing YouTube that I will stop carrying my phone my camera and maybe if um, I got another phone that can do both vlogging and whatever then I can maybe just carry the phone and I might just switch to a walk but for now I don't think so uh, also, I don't like the ch the fact that the chains are so long in general. Even with Gucci, I mean the Chanel walk is just too long. The Gucci one is also too long. Um, I haven't tried the LV one, so I don't really know. Coco handle, don't like the fact that every time you open the flap that the handle really like hits you and gets in the way. That's just a pet peeve. Um, so no Coco handle for me for, for the time being. The Gabriel bag, on the other hand, I love. I'm like so obsessed with it. I think there's just a cool factor with that bag. I love the chain details. Um, I love that there's a very stiff and sturdy base but like a soft side uh, to the bag. I love it when you wear it you know different ways with the two straps across your, both your shoulders and or even as a belt. It's just amazing. The design is just so cool. Next question by Monique Bino. Hello Amy, love your videos. I'm thinking about buying an LV bag. Which one is better, the Neverfull or the Kensington? If you guys didn't know, I had the Kensington. It just didn't work for my lifestyle. And truly, you guys know that I love my small bags. And I predominantly use my small bags like 99% of the time or maybe 90% of the time. Uh, and the only times where I reach for a bigger bag, such as my Neverfull or my any of my totes, um is just when i really need to so either when i'm traveling or I have a whole day out and i'm not going to be home uh running errands such as like you know going to the doctor shopping grocery shopping all that stuff so whenever i have that type of day then i i reach for that big bag so the kensington being a bigger bag in my opinion it is also a bulkier bag whenever i did reach for it it didn't satisfy my needs uh, for something you know just grab and go it was big but not that big it was kind of like medium in fact because the moment that you stuff it too much then the sides get all wonky and it just didn't 
work out for me at all not the way that I visualized it to be at first I thought it was going to be wonderful because it has structure yet it was bigger and flexible but I realized at the end that I when I go for my bigger bags I need flexibility I need them to be as accommodating as possible and if you're like me I would suggest the Neverfull rather than the Kensington um, especially if you don't already have a Neverfull or if you don't already have a tote because to me the, the Neverfull is one of my favorite bags from LV in fact if I lost all my LV bags I would get the Neverfull first I think pretty sure I will yeah that's that's basically the bag that I will get first from LV that's how much I love it and that's how functional I find it to be. Melissa Pintone. I'm looking for a Chanel bag but cannot decide between the rectangle mini or square which would you recommend for versatility or value. I also have all my bags in black. What color do you recommend I get for my next bag? In my reveal video, if you guys haven't seen it, I will link it down below as well as up here. I mentioned that I love both. And I know that's not very helpful, but basically, I really, really like the shape and the the strap drop of the square. I think, to me, a mini bag in the shape of that square mini is just the cutest thing. It's such a struggle to get in and out of the square with this phone. I can fit it. I can fit everything in the square, but it's just so much easier for the rectangle. So, I still love both. I, I actually do really like the look of the square more. But I like the functionality and the ease of access of the rectangular more. Um, with the rectangular mini, I know that a lot of people also prefer the longer chain. For me, I don't really care. I actually prefer a shorter chain, but that's just to each their own. Value-wise, they're both great because there's only a couple hundred or three hundred dollar difference between the two. Um, so it's not really that much more significant in terms of which one retains its I think both retain their value really well and it only matters if you're selling your bag down the road last question is by Cape Cod Bell how do you feel about the Chanel reissue now it is my favorite bag she was referring to my video uh, the 10 Lux facts about me I'll link it down below if you guys are interested and I mentioned that I um, my first Chanel bag was a reissue bag that I bought but I only had it for a few months and sold it shortly after because I felt so guilty, I didn't use it and uh, I felt that you know it was just sitting there and it was so expensive at the, well, it's so cheap compared to the prices now but it was so expensive back then my initial thought when I bought the bag is that I didn't like all the CC logos <laughs> to be very honest like all these classic bags that I love and have now I didn't like them at first because I felt like it was too flashy but that was like 10 years ago and that was like when I was not comfortable being you know carrying stuff that you know um, just appeared to be so out of this world and so like out of reach or whatever like that's just how I thought at the time I just almost felt like I didn't deserve it in a sense I think it, internally that's what I was feeling but anyway I digress I do still really love the reissue because I feel that it's it, it's a timeless bag it's a timeless design it's also the under under the radar design uh, it's the original design um, I I would get one. I, I actually I still really want the distressed black leather one with gold chain. But with the reissue, like a lot of people say, and also just personally, I would never really buy a classic flap in in the retail store. Um, hence the reason why I I don't have any classic flap in that's from the retail store. I only buy the minis from the retail store because those ones are still kind of reasonable compared to the pre-loved market. I also really love the chain. The chain is bejeweled and it is slightly longer than the than the classic flap. I think it's just so so pretty. I definitely still love it. I, it's definitely still my style and I would uh, definitely still be on the hunt for one in the future. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this Q&A. If you're new to my channel, welcome and I hope that you subscribe because I would love to have you and I also post several videos a week, uh, usually at least one every Monday and then I try to post you know, a few more during the week. But regardless, uh, I hope you guys are doing well and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye!